Hi, this is Kim from Dorothy's Daughter. Welcome to Friday Sewing School. This would be lesson number 1.5. Um, today we are going to talk about um, obtaining the right measurements uh, for the pattern we're about to sew and also a little bit about the properties of fabric. So sit back, relax, get a grab a cup of coffee and enjoy. The measurements you will need for the cadence pattern that we will be sewing um, beginning next week are, um, I'm gonna demonstrate on Georgia. This is my model, Georgia. She is not an exact replica of me any longer, but at one time she was. I need to add some padding to her as I've added a little padding to myself. <laughs> anyway, I uh, keep hoping that maybe I would lose it and wouldn't have to, but um, you know how that story goes. So you want three measurements, and I'm sorry, four measurements. You want the upper bust. So what you're going to do is go underneath your arms. And measure just above. Just above your bust line. And that's about a 41 on her. Then you wanna measure your full bust. Now you wanna do these measurements with whatever bra you would be uh, wearing when you wear the dress. Um, so definitely don't, you know, your measurements are gonna vary greatly with and without a bra. So you definitely wanna be wearing your bra. The fullest part of her bust is about Looks like that's about 41 as well. I'm not sure how that's possible, but um, I think it's kind of sinking in because she's not real. She sinks in in the back. Yours would definitely be larger than your upper bust. Now the difference between these two measurements, as we'll see as we're choosing which size to do with our cadence pattern, um, there's a full bust and a standard bust. The difference between these two measurements are what you will use to um, determine whether or not you need to do a full bust uh, adjustment. All right, now the waistline, the waist that, where you're gonna measure yourself is if you put your hands on your hips, that place where your arms naturally rest, or what you can do is tie a string or something around your waist at your natural waistline. Um, once you find it, you know that's what it is. So that's where you want to measure your waistline. And Georgia's waistline is about is about 34. And then the other measurement you need is the fullest part of your hips. So you're just going to measure the very fullest part of your hip line. And that measurement on her is about 42. I wish those were still my measurements, but we won't go there today. All right, so those are the measurements you're going to need in order to choose which size of the cadence pattern to cut. And we will get into that further. We will be uh, assembling the pattern and um, cutting out the fabric next week. But today, I wanna focus more on choosing your fabric and getting your measurements in line. So that's, that is the measurements that you need in order to choose your size. So another handy tool, which I can't show you because I'm recording with my phone, there is an app called Dress Measurement. It is in the iPhone App Store. Um, it's a really nice app that will sh uh, allow you to record all of your measurements, and then you can go back in and adjust them if they change. Um, it's nice because you can always have those handy with you. Um, and if you sew for other people, you can have theirs as well. Like I have my grandchildren, my husband in mine um, as well. Okay, so today we'll talk about fabric a little bit. Um, there are two basic types of fabric. One is woven and one is knit. Um, a woven fabric is just that. The weft and warp are woven together and it's strong, will not stretch. This is, a, this is a woven fabric. It will not stretch. So unless they have some polyester or spandex or elastane or whatever added to them, they do not stretch. 
all right? And a knit is a stretch fabric. Um, this dress I'm wearing is a knit and the fabric does stretch. Um, this is a jersey. Uh, they're all different types of knits and different types of wovens. Um, and the different types depend on how the weave or looping, as it were, um, knits are looped together, knits are woven. I'm sorry, knits are knits are looped together and woven fabric is obviously woven together. All right, so with every piece of fabric, you have a selvage edge and a grain line and a bias. The selvage edge are those finished edges on either end that um, are usually marked in some way. This one has like the colors that are in the fabric. Sometimes they're just, you know, heavily, more heavily bound than the rest of it. Um, but you can usually tell where the salvage edges are. And the, the way to determine the grain line is that the grain line runs parallel to the salvage edge. So um, if a pattern piece tells you to put it on the grain line, it's going to go parallel. It's usually uh, denoted by an arrow, so you'll put it parallel to these selvage lines. All right, so the bias then is a direct 45 degree angle to the grain line. So um, if you put something on a bias, demonstrate this here. If you put something on a bias, it actually, even though it's a woven, it will actually stretch a bit. So that will come into play when you need to ease in some things, when you do um, bias tape for necklines and that sort of thing, which don't worry if you don't understand that right now, you will, um, when the time comes, um, we, will be, um, we will be explaining that again as we do it. Um, so for every, um, for every pattern, there will usually be suggested fabrics. On the cadence pattern on page four, it says your recommended fabrics are light to medium weight apparel wovens such as linen, chambray, rayon, and poplin. And it says knits may be used as well, but sizing down may be needed. For the purposes of learning, I'm going to ask that you um, use a woven for this first time. Um, a, co a quilting cotton works very well, and they're usually, you can find them on sale. Um, it's a nice what nice place to start with your first project would be something that isn't uh, super expensive that um, if you make a mistake you know it's durable so that you can use your seam ripper if you need to um, this is a cotton lawn this is the fabric i've chosen to do my cadence um, this is a cotton lawn it's um it's kind of lightweight i would say medium more light to medium weight and I think it's gonna make a really nice dress. So um, as you're shopping for fabric, that's what you're going to do. You're going to look for a stable woven at, that um, is either lightweight or midweight. Um, so you don't wanna use denim, you don't wanna use um, a real heavy twill. Um, you want like a, a cotton lawn, a quilter's cotton, um, something like that. That's what I would suggest if you're shopping. Um, Hobby Lobby always has theirs at 30% off, plus they have a coupon 40% um, off every um, every week. So, and they will apply that 40%. What they do is they take it back to regular price and then give you the 40 instead of 30. Um, so that's a good way to buy some fabric um, to, for the first time and they have lots of selection. Joann's also has frequent sales. I'm not sure what's going on right now, um, but that's a good way also to um, pick up your fabric. And I think the salespeople in both places are helpful. Um, in Joann's, they may be a little bit more knowledgeable about fabric than in Hobby Lobby, but um, they'll usually help you out. If you just look for a quilter's cotton or a cotton lawn, um, you'll be good. All right, so I just wanted to show you um, a book that I have. It's called Fabric for Fashion. And this is a swatch book. And I refer to this often because it has, it has pieces of fabric um, so that you can identify them. So if you end up with a, a piece of fabric in your stash and you don't know what it is, you can um, look in this book and try to find something um, similar to it. It also has a good description of different fabrics, their care, um, what they're used for, 
um, and all kinds of things. So um, just a suggestion if you, definitely not a necessity, but if you get to the point where you're sewing a lot and you have a stash and you may have forgotten what that piece was that you bought, which happens to me quite frequently, um, it might be a good investment. So I'll just, um, I think they have a companion book to this that does not have the swatches, that just has the information. You may even be able to find that at your local library. So now that you have your measurements, you'll also be able to choose the size of your um, that you're going to make, um, at least within a range, so that you know how much fabric to purchase. Um, on page four of the Cadence pattern, you will see that um, here are the different lengths and the two uh, widths of fabric. So when you choose your fabric, you uh, it'll either be 54 to 60 inches wide or it'll be like 42 to 45 inches wide. So choose which, uh, which width of fabric you have, which length you want to make. I'm going to make the knee length um, and I am going to fall in this large to extra, extra, extra large category. I don't think I'll be the extra, extra, but um, I'm going to fall in this category. So I am going to use two yards, which is what I have of this. Um, if you fell in the extra small to medium and you wanted to do knee length, you would do one and three eighths yards. So um, that's how you know how much fabric to buy. I would recommend, since this is your first project, you might want to buy a quarter, uh, a quarter of a yard extra, just in case you make any cutting mistakes. Um, and also, if you buy it locally, um, and you know they have more. If you do make a big mistake, you can go back and um, not have to replace the whole thing. Um, I'm not saying you're going to make mistakes, but um, with a first project, you know, allow yourself a few mistakes because they happen to everyone and it's not the end of the world. That's why we have seam rippers and um, it's happened to me. It happened to me yesterday. So as a matter of fact, so um, I was making a jumpsuit and I accidentally cut the fabric the wrong way. And now my jumpsuit's going to look a little different because I have to use a different fabric for the bottom. So um, it happens to everyone. All right. So go ahead and choose your length of, of that you want to make and the fabric that um, and that then your size range and you'll be able to know how much fabric you need. The other thing to get ready for next week is that you want to pre-wash your fabric. Um, usually a lot of woven fabrics are natural fabrics. Um, so like cotton, linen, that kind of thing. Um, you definitely want to wash it. Um, I always wash it on at least the same um, setting of my washer that I would wash the finished product. Finished product. Um, sometimes with cottons, I will wash them on warm, and then that's the last time they ever see warm water. That way I know it's not gonna shrink on me. Um, so you would definitely want to, um, before next week, have your fabric all pre-washed and um, and ready to be cut out. So next week we will tape the pattern together um, and cut out the pattern and have everything prepped and ready to go. All right. Have a wonderful, wonderful Memorial Day weekend. Um, I hope it's, uh, I hope it finds you well and that you have a wonderful time with family and friends. Um, remember those who served um, to keep our country free. And if you're in another country, um, you can pause and do the same for your own service folk. I don't know. I, I think it's just a U.S. holiday, but um, nevertheless, wherever you are in the world, you have men and women who serve faithfully to keep you safe. So let's pause and remember those people today. Uh, next week, I will be back on Tuesday with a very special video. I have a special guest in my video for next week. I think you're going to enjoy it. It's probably... Um, probably the best video of mine that you'll ever see. I am totally upstaged by my granddaughter. So I will leave it at that and uh, hope you enjoy your weekend. Happy sewing.